well you know like to be honest i don't even remember like the time when i was not an artist so i remember myself only um like uh, as a child who had a, like a clear goals and ambition in life that uh, that like uh, regardless of the uh, my unprivileged position I knew that I have to fight certain circumstances and situations in which I lived and I knew that art education is actually the path which gonna lead me for my freedom so I don't know like uh, art just came naturally to me nothing was like faking neither neither I tried so much it's just like it was there for me I actually I don't know like if I will be able to survive with without art well first of all like it has a lot of advantages and also disadvantages because when you are an artist from Balkans people outside of the Balkans uh, like always assuming that that your work is always dealing with the war and like um, political crisis and so on uh, another thing is like you know being an artist for Balkans means that you are constantly limited with the budgets with the infrastructure which doesn't allow you actually to grow um, for this situation like I can talk you know about my situation growing up in Bosnia as an emerging young artist I had a lot of issues where um, artists were not paid it's just like normal not to get paid for your work but another thing is that many artists are like from Balkans are very intellectual and very clever and uh, their art is really amazing and good um, the concept and form and everything what they do actually makes sense but many of them they don't have access how to make themselves visible I was studying at academy in Bosnia I was studying painting so I started basically as a painter so I was mostly dealing with okay I'm gonna like uh, draw and uh, paint self-portraits and like do something which is related to my personal identities so my first research researchers were more personal more intimate I was questioning myself my Roma identity uh, born in Bosnia like um, the situation with non-Roma toward Roma and opposite and then later my research my, my research went a little bit broader where I was like researching social condi conditions within my identity and also like researching the law researching the history like you know like any like concepts uh, were get more broader and more like uh, um, connected with uh, social condi conditions in which I was living and now I'm more interested in like researching uh, of course my identity within the social context but uh, going more into universal topics which means like I'm researching the limits of knowledge today but also the physical space yeah I mean like as I said like in my research like um, you know it comes from the personal you know experience where uh, you know like I grew up in a Roma ghetto and uh, the only job that I remember that my father was working on was like a scrap metal and as a child I was used to work with him as well I knew at very young age how to you know uh, separate uh, copper from like uh, aluminium and other metals or how to dismantle the washing machine or vacuum cleaners or, or, or the car any or other objects and to separate the parts which are good for recycling and then when I was studying at Academy you know I was like so bored of painting on canvas because um, it just didn't, didn't give me any excitement but at the same time it was very expensive right as a student you need to think about how do I paint this painting to be perfect because I don't want to waste my money and then I just like <clears throat> went home and I was like talking with my father and I was working the scrap yard and then I realized oh my god all these objects that my father is collecting are beautiful and they are art themselves somehow 
and I started to paint. I was painting just like por myself portraits, portraits of my father, my brother, my mom. It's just like intimate, like diary of my family. And then I realized like this is actually, this could be like an artwork. You know, this could be um, just like an artifact, just like when I put it in the gallery, I transform something which didn't have value. I put it in the gallery and it has the value. So these paintings on metal, they're coming from my personal experience. But another thing, uh, I'm also going back to the research is like I, I was thinking about how do I make the, the social uh, environment also for my family where I'm going to um, also help them through selling these artworks, right? So this is something which also gives them uh, stability. And then thinking about the univer universality and about the metal, I was just recently fascinated by the fact that, um, that the metal shower who uh, actually hit the earth 200 million years ago, destroyed everything on earth and actually created the metals we, are, we have today. You know, um, from the forks, to the phone like we have we're using this metal uh, because of the because of the circumstances in which happened like that the metal shower hit the earth and if these things i mean if the metal shower would hit the earth now today everything will be destroyed and i think um you know like this reality and this fact you know which is real it's really funny but also very uh interesting and I think it's really beautifully connected also with I'm doing with the metal because I'm do, using the objects which, um, which just uh, came to earth naturally. Almost like all the works that I'm working with the metal, they're dealing with, with ecological, social and th uh, technological uh, conditions because they're all related to each other. I did this work long time ago, like it was in, I think 2016, I actually made a video, but the research I started in 2014. So what happened was that, you know, like the story of my mom is very, I would say, inspiring and very difficult at the same time. So she grew up in Kosovo and then um, at age of 12, her parents arranged arranged a marriage for her and uh, during that time she was living in Yugoslavia and um, you know like if you live in Yugoslavia it's easy to travel from one country to another like you know in Balkans so she could easily travel from Kosovo to Bosnia without having any documents and then she actually came to Bosnia and married my father who was at that time 17 so they just get married without um having this um, like a certificate of the marriage because during that time like if the bride comes to the husband's house they're perceived as a married couple and then um and then there was like a war in bosnia in 92 and then she was stuck you know she couldn't travel anywhere you know and talking with her and being in position of the artist you know I was like questioning her position a lot because she would bury only two roles. She was only a mother and she was a wife. She never had a time to be herself. And her big wish and desire was to travel to another country to see how is that to pass the border and how is that to experience the sea? Is it sea really salty as she heard it was? <laughs> I didn't think about that this work has to be art. I just wanted to record the video so I can show to my sisters because my sisters were also worried about her and they also wanted her to, you know, like uh, to have the passport. And I just recorded this first moment and then I realized this is a beautiful moment where, where the history, where the past, pa where past, present and future collapses like and 
reborns a new human, a new identity. She, so she became a new human being, you know, with entering in that sea, and she really experienced it. And uh, another interesting facts are that, for example, thinking more about this research and the work, I came across about, uh, came across to um, amazing terrorist uh, and researcher that I really ad admire, Marina Grzynic, and she was uh, actually talking talking about uh, the immigrants who are always um, traveling from one country to another or immigrating and they're always in the process of dying. So she calls this term deading. And then I was inspired by this term and then I made my own concept based on the deading, which I call lifing, because I was thinking that the people who, who immigrate, that people who go to another country to work, uh, they're not so much bodies who are dying, they're the bodies who are really trying to live that bodies who really want to survive, they're looking for a better life. You have no idea is the work which I was um, doing many times. I did it many times, but every time it's very different. And the idea of this performance is to make something which is very simple, but also very political, very personal, but at the same time universal. So what is very important in this performance is that uh, I'm coming from like, as you know, like from very unprivileged position, but I took the right to say to people, you have no idea, which is of course related to my life, but it is somehow connected with the audience who are gonna watch or see my performance. And with saying this uh, statement or in the sentence, I actually say nothing, but I actually say everything to everyone. And just recently, I, I ex executed this performance uh, for the election day in uh, Washington DC uh, at the Black, Black Lives Matters Plaza. And uh, you know, like uh, it was a really interesting moment, like the, the moment in the history, it should happen once and this is it. And I just found myself as an artist who actually has to do something. And I was thinking the only thing which could make sense in this particular moment was the work you have no idea. You have no idea! You have no idea! You have no idea! You have no idea! The first performance which I did with like using the objects to destroy was uh, in 2017. Like um, I destroyed the washing machine. And during that time, I was uh, studying uh, in New York and um, I got an invitation to do a performance in Croatia. And this would be the first time that I go back to Europe as an artist who already kind of lived in the United States. So what I wanted to do is somehow to relate myself, you know, with my village with the environment I was living in and also to show myself, to do my self portrait. And what is really interesting in this work and I think important is that I'm saying that I didn't lose the integrity with my village, neither my past. So I was like, um, I mean like the entire procedure of the performance was, performance was also funny because I was like so scared that I don't know like how to do performances anymore because I live now in the United States like I'm completely another artist and then I call my dad I'm like what should I do I'm lost and he's like it's easy Selma just like go and destroy washing machine you will see people will like it
what I'm doing, I'm deconstructing and destroying these objects which were connected for many centuries with uh, women's labor. But at the same time, I, I'm constructing my own identity I'm, and I'm constructing uh, my own way uh, for survival and survival for my family. Viva La Vida is the performance, it's actually staged performance which I did in my backyard in Bosnia. So I just put the carpet and I brought a few watermelons and then my friend was recording me. <laughs> um, and then like, you know, like doing this performance, I was thinking about how do I make a beautiful work which is going to take a lot of attention, you know, like putting uh, like a carpet and putting like wearing a nice dress and holding the watermelon and being barefoot. I wanted to have all this symbolism which people would have to decode in order to understand the work. But I wanted first to have the attention of the audiences who will see this work and somehow like be attracted to it because of the aesthetic values of the work. But the work itself is very, um, I would say it's very, very, sensitive it's a very sensitive topic because of course it's coming from my per personal experience uh, um, living in the patriarchal world and dealing with uh, psychological abuses and uh, being victim of the patriarchy and how did i actually uh, fought it It's connected with the work of Frida Kahlo, the last painting she did in 1954, which is also called Viva la Vida. And uh, this is her last pa painting, which is also talking about the life and the pain in her life. As much as this work, Viva la Vida, is about pain in the life, for me, it's uh, my, my work is mostly related with uh, uh, solidarity. It's... Uh, related to emancipation with the symbolism of the watermelon and with the visibility of the women. Mercedes Metric is the latest performance which I did actually last year in Hamburg for Cross Festival. And um, again, like uh, for these kind of performances, I always collaborate with my family. So we have a meeting and we together uh, agree upon like which performance we're going to do and which object we're going to use. And this is first time that I that I also included my um, my father, my brother and my neighbor Mirso to be part of the performance and they really wanted they really wanted to be part of this performance and then uh, we traveled together in Hamburg and then we executed this performance um, the story is really interesting because um, you know like all of them they're working um, you know collecting the scrap metal in the village and they're destroying the cars on the daily basis because this is something that uh, makes survival for them right so I take the car, which they would usually destroy in the village, and I put it in the in the context of the art world. And I go, and it is Mercedes, which actually has the connotation with capitalism as well. And I'm doing it in a in a country which is pretty much related to capitalism and Mercedes. So I'm it's like mostly like a site specific environment. So I was really interested also in like how do I deconstruct the, the capitalism and deconstructing and destroying the stereotypical image of Roma people because Roma people are pretty much like connected with like Mercedes cars uh, in Balkans, like mostly. Uh, so I wanted actually to do the work which deconstructs, deconstructs the capitalism also constructs the labor for my family because they're gonna like 
get the money and honorariums for the, the specific work because they're not perceived in this very moment as a workers, they're perceived as a performers. And um, this is the first time when they felt uh, proud on what they're doing. Of course, like one part of this uh, like earned honorarium goes to my project uh, Get the Heck to School, but not only from this uh, work. Everything what I do, like any kind of money I make, like 50% uh, goes for my foundation. My name is Salma Salman. I'm an artist and activist born and raised in Bosnia. Currently, I live in the United States. I belong to Roma, the biggest minority in Europe, and I'm a founder of the project Get the Heck to School or Marshall School. Get the Heck to School is the project which I started in 2017, working with the female, uh, female foundation, Bay Heart Foundation here in DC. And together we made a fundraising night where we sold my works and made enough money to fund first five girls and 35 children who will get the daily lunch. And today I have 12 girls who are getting the scholarship and I have 40 and more children who are getting daily lunch. And I'm working alone in this because, you know, like it's really hard to get funding for this kind of project because there, there is no institution, neither organization who will fund children in elementary school. So what I want to do is like, I want to make army of the uh, strong women who will have a clear goal and have the uh, necessary education so they can fight for their rights in this world. I was invited uh, to do a project for the Venice Biennale for the Roma Pavilion, whose concept was dealing re with uh, Roma futurism, which is related to Afrofuturism. And then, um, you know, like it's really hard to uh, deal with the people at Venice because there's always like so many artists and so many other criteria. And, um, you know, like, Every time I would suggest like a idea, what I could do, like the installation, which would be like, I don't know, I wanted to put the van in Venice, but they would always like tell me there is like no space, neither budget. And then I suggested this concept of uh, actually uh, to do the project, no space, where I will do the performance. Um, but they said there is no space. And then I came across about, okay, how can I make a work which, which is not going to take any space, which is not to take any budget, and which is going to be accessible to everyone, but also understandable uh, to children, and somehow talk about everything. And then I just went in one of the shittiest studios at my university, and uh, I recorded myself. And then we just put the planet um, in a video like um, uh, like augmented planet and we put myself put me on the top and I was this big woman who was talking about uh, occupying the entire space using myself as a big woman you know like taking all the space you know which in reality physically none of us need so much space but at the same time we need a space get that from here I have Well, um, I work on like many stuff, but more precisely, I am like researching and working on a couple of projects, uh, which uh, some of them is like 100 year plan uh, using artificial intelligence and uh, working with the team in United States, like such as uh, uh, Bridge Agency to actually develop a plan which is going to help mar uh, mar marginalized group of people how to fight discrimination and poverty. My name is Salma Salman. I'm an artist born and raised in Bosnia and I am of Roma origin. I use art as a tool in order to break prejudices against Roma people which exist for almost 100 years in Europe and across the world. 
I have been working uh, on the superpositional museum who recognizes Roman long history of, of uh, futuristic inventions in the field of economic, social, and technological um, artist recycling. I'm working on another project, uh, which is uh, I want to collect a lot of um, uh, uh, e-technology, like wasted technology. And then like from this technology, I want to kind of extract the gold. And uh, this will be one of the performances that I'm planning to do in Sarajevo for my solo, for my upcoming solo show. And then like I'm also loosely kind of researching uh, and trying to put all these works under the concept of the ethical futurism, which is kind of uh, connecting 100 year plan project and the gold project and talking about ethical futures, you know, for all of us.